The Quran asserts that it, as well as the Torah and Gospels, are preserved in heaven with Allah. Will you elaborate? Muhammadans hold that the Quran and all the tenets of their faith came directly from Allah sent down through Angel Gabriel to Muhammad. Much of their faith is also built upon the ahadith, traditions handed down by his followers. Our arguments have hence to be based mainly on the Quran, which is accepted as divine by every Muhammadan of whichever sect, and on such traditions as is comfortable thereto. Thus Allah alone is held to be the source of Muhammadan Islam, and if so, then all efforts to find a human origin for any part of it must be in vain. But if we can trace the teaching of any part of it to an earthly source or to human concepts and ideas existing prior to Muhammad's age, then Muhammadan Islam collapses at once upon its false foundations. It therefore behooves every true and enlightened believer with the utmost diligence to test whether this claim to be true or not. If their opponents can bring to light no human sources, they may contend by omission that Muhammadan Islam is indeed divine. But if otherwise, they cannot but perceive what fatal conclusions must be drawn. Let us then test the assertions of those who hold to the existence of human sources and see whether any portion of the doctrines and tenets of Muhammadan Islam can be traced to other faiths, beliefs, and traditions preceding Muhammad's age or existing at his time. According to the following verses of the Quran, it is preserved on tablets in heaven. Al-Zukhruf 43.2 By the book that makes things clear, we have made it a Quran in Arabic that you may be able to understand. And verily, it is the mother of the book, in our presence, high in dignity, full of wisdom. Al-Buruj 85.21 Nay, this is a Qur'an glorious, inscribed in a tablet preserved. In Arabic, بَلْ هُوَ قُرْآنُ مُجِيدُ فِي لَوْحِ مَحْفُوظِ Muhammadans thus believe that the Qur'an is of eternal origin, recorded in heaven and inscribed upon the preserved table. This concept is actually plagiarized from the traditions of the Jews as it appears in the Talmud in Pirkei Abot, Volume 6, which refers to the tablets that Moses cut so that the Almighty would write on it with his own hand the Ten Commandments. In later rabbinic traditions, these tablets, which were at first preserved in the Ark of the Covenant, are believed to be preserved on a replica with the Almighty. Muhammad, as usual, plagiarized and insinuated into his Quran a similar tradition. Al-Anbiya 21.105 Verily, we have written in the Psalms after the message given to Moses that my servants the righteous shall inherit the earth. This is, of course, an evident reference to Psalm 37.11, but the meek shall inherit the earth. Now, before saying anything about this tablet or table, one may ask, was the book of Psalms in existence before the Quran or not? Since the Quran quotes from the Psalms, is it not clear, therefore, that the Psalms existed before the Qur'an? How then could the Qur'an, produced so late in world history, have been placed on the heavenly tablet with the Torah and the Gospels? Now let us read what tradition tells us about this tablet. Sunan Abu Dawood 1454, narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas. The Apostle of Allah was given seven repeated long surahs, while Moses was given six. When he threw the tablets, Two of them were withdrawn and four remained. Abbas's information is as usual among the Muhammadans, both erroneous, unsubstantiated and false. First and foremost, there is no record in the Torah of the event described above, hence it is a lie. Second, the seven oft-repeated surahs were not and are not surahs, chapters, but actually ayat, verses. Moreover, since the Quran and its interpreters repeatedly assert the inviolability and eternal all-knowing character of Allah's rules and regulations, how can they at the same time explain away the most controversial cases of the abrogated and abrogated surahs which number 71 out of 114, that is 62.28 of the Quran? Why and what for would Allah 
If he were the Almighty, the Omniscient, the All-Knowing, change his mind at what he had already announced and replace it with one equal or better than the first. What would the purpose be of changing one for an equal? Why change it at all, especially if it is only for an equal? Why not pronounce the better or even the best from the beginning, hence avoiding the need to upgrade? Does Allah break his own promises and instructions? Does Allah, if Allah is God, have more than one tablet? It is actually an insult and blasphemy to the Almighty and to the intelligence of human beings who accept such profanity and idiocy of a concept or dogma. We have from Abdul Fida in his Qisas al Anbiya and Ara'ish al Majalis the following story. One tells us that the throne of Allah is made out of a pearl, as is also the preserved table, the height of which is 700 years journey and its breadth 300. All around it is adorned with rubies. The Lord commanded that there should be written upon it what he had wrought in creation and onwards till the day of judgment. The source of this tale is also to be found in Hebrew scriptures, but vastly exaggerated by the Mohammedans. We read in the Torah that when God desired to give forth the Ten Commandments, he thus addresses Moses, who has himself given us the account in Deuteronomy 10, 1 to 5. At that time, the Lord said unto me, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount, and make thee an ark of wood, and thou will write on the tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them into the ark. And God wrote on the tables, according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments. And I put the tables in the ark, as the Lord commanded me. Elsewhere also in the Bible, we are told that the two tables were preserved in the Ark of the Covenant. But in the course of time, the Jewish tradition imagined that all the books of the Torah, even the Talmud itself too, were deposited in the Ark on the tables. Muhammad, hearing this about the Jewish law and scriptures, created the same for his own, and alleged that the Quran was also placed on the preserved table. His followers, not understanding of what heavenly table he spoke, swelled out the whole matter into the story given above. The following is from a Jewish writer, Rabbi Simeon. The tables are the Ten Commandments. Commandments also mean the Mishnah, the Prophets and the Holy Writings, and the Gemara, that all these were delivered to Moses on Mount Sinai. No intelligent Jew would for a moment credit this extraordinary story knowing that the Mishnah was not written till about the year 220 CE, the Gemara of Jerusalem in 430 CE, and the Gemara of Babylon about 530 CE. A later tradition of the Jews holds that the tables are of a date beyond time, as mentioned in Pirkei Abot, Volume 6, at the creation of the world, at the sunset before the Sabbath day. The followers of Muhammad copied this too, and declared the same for their Quran. Al-A'ra 7.145 And we ordained laws for him in the tablets in all matters, both commanding and explaining all things. The scholars of Muhammadan Islam believe that the tablets of the law, the Ten Commandments, contain the essential truth from which are derived the positive injunctions and prohibitions, explanations and interpretations which it was the function of the prophetic office to hold up for the people to follow. al Naba 78.29 and all things have we preserved on record. al mutafafin 83.18 Nay, verily the record of the righteous is preserved in Eliyin. And what will explain to thee what Eliyin is? There is a register fully inscribed. Muhammad obviously plagiarized the concept of the tablets in the heavens from the Jews, as he did with most of the decent Quranic ideas and precepts since the illiterate and unlearned pagan Arabs had no such beliefs. Al-An'am 6.59 There is not a grain in the darkness of the depths of the earth, nor anything fresh or dry, green or withered, but is inscribed in a record clear to those who can read. Al-Zukhruf 43.2 By the book that makes things clear, we have made it a Quran in Arabic that ye may be able to understand and learn wisdom. 
and verily it is the mother of the book in our presence high in dignity full of wisdom according to muhammadan islam the mother of the book the foundation of revelation the preserved tablet lawh al mahfuz is the core or essence of revelation the original principle or fountainhead of allah's eternal and universal law the mother of the book is in allah's own presence and his dignity and wisdom are more than all we can think of